right so let's start with chapter 3 cost classification whenever we talk about the costs sara what is the definition of costs cost is the um it's the value of consumption uh, of assets very good value of consumption of assets or resources of the organization so we can have lots of different type of resources in any organization like direct material for example or labor or overheads and so on so these can be considered as the resources and whenever we are going to do our production or we are going to produce our product. So we will going to consume these resources and whatever amount of resources we will going to use will be considered as cost. Now, as we know that there are different types of resources, some resources can be used directly on our product. Some will going to use indirectly in our production and some will not going to use on a production at all. So obviously we need to classify these costs so we can provide more relevant information to the managers. <laughs> so this chapter three will move around uh, cost classification. Clear with this overview? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Next. We are having the topic list here. First of all, we will be discussing here cost classification in a cost accounting system. What type of classifications we can have? Then what is the difference between direct and indirect cost? Classification mm -hmm. by function. Every organization might going to perform different types of function. And when we are going to classify a cost based on those functions will be considered as classification by function. So what can be the functions? For example, organization can do purchases, for example. They will be providing finance function. They will be performing production function and so on. OK, classification by behavior, a little bit cost behavior we will going to discuss. Then in chapter four, we will be discussing it in more detail. And after that classification by responsibility, we already have seen the responsibility centers. Mm -hmm. So we can also use those responsibility areas or centers so we can classify our cost. So there is not one way to classify our cost. It depends from organization to organization and managers to managers that how they prefer to classify the, their costs. Clear with this topic list? Yes, sir. Okay. Next, first of all, the formula of product cost. You already have studied this in MA1. Yes, sir. So how we can calculate product cost, Sarah? Um, well, first we'll write down the prime cost. So that'll be direct materials, direct labor, and Very di good. Uh, direct expense. So direct add that up material, yeah direct materials direct labor and direct expenses and when we will going to add these three we will get the prime cost then with the prime cost we will going to add production overheads And then we will get the product production. Cost. And with the product cost, if we are going to add non-production overheads, we will get the total cost. cost. And if we are going to add profit markup, on the cost or with the cost, 
then we will get the total selling price of our product and this is the price that we will going to charge from our customer okay so let's discuss these terms in the formula so you can get a better idea first of all direct materials what are direct materials Sarah? um direct materials are materials that can be those materials that are used in the production um that can be traced back to the product directly very good to the any cost that can be traced back to our product or any cost that we used directly on our product for example if we are manufacturing car in our factory for example so what can be the direct material for example the parts that we are using to build the engine of the car or stereo system in the car Maybe we are going to use leather to make up the seats. Then we might going to use paint to paint the body of the car and so on. So all these will be considered as direct material. Then what is direct labor, Sara? Um, the workforce that is working directly to make this product. Very good. Any labor who is working on the factory floor and he is actually working to produce the product. He might be working through his hands or with the help of equipment, or he's actually um, uh, standing on a, a machinery or a part of machinery and he is doing the work. So that will be, or doing the production. So that person or that labor will be considered as direct labor. So any labor who is working directly on the product, so any labor who is working on machine or any labor who is working on assembly line to manufacture the car, all this labor will be considered as direct labor. Then direct expenses, all the expenses other than material or labor mm -hmm. that we use directly on our product any expenses other than material or labor. So that will be considered as direct expenses. Sarah, what example you can give for this direct expense? Um, maybe a tool that is used specifically for that job. Yeah, any tool that we, if we are going to hire any equipment or tools just to specifically perform that job. So the cost of that tool and equipment will be considered as direct expense all right so when we are going to add all these direct costs what we will get prime cost so prime cost basically mean all the direct cost of production okay after that production overheads production overheads comprise of three items basically indirect material indirect labor excuse me and indirect expenses and collectively to all these three we can call it production overheads what is indirect material Indirect material is any material which we are not using directly on a product, but still it's necessary to complete the production process. So any material which we are not using on a product, but it's still necessary to complete the production process. So, Sarah, what can be the example of indirect materials? Lubricant used for the machinery. Very good. If, for example, we are going to use any lubricants in this example, 
So that lubricants, we will going to use it on a machine and then machine will going to manufacture the car. So lubricants can be considered as an indirect material or any materials that we are going to buy to clean up the production department. So that will also be considered as indirect material. Then indirect labor, any labor who is not working directly on a product, but still necessary to complete the production process. What can be the example, Sarah? Uh, supervisor supervisor on the factory floor because supervisor yes, is not responsible to manufacture the car but supervisor have a responsibility to supervise all the labor that is actually working on a factory floor then production manager now production manager will never be producing the product but he will be responsible to do the planning, controlling, and decision-making for the production department. So these both are not actually producing the product, but these both are still necessary to complete the production process. Then prime cost, which includes all the direct cost and the production over, okay, indirect expenses are remaining. Indirect expenses are all the expenses other than material and labor, which are necessary to complete the production process. So Sarah, what can be the example of indirect expenses? Uh, maintenance of the machinery. Very or, good, machinery maintenance. Or... Machinery maintenance, rent of factory or production department. Factory insurance. Insurance of machinery in the production department and so on. So remember, these are production overheads. These are the indirect cost of production department. So all these indirect material, indirect labor, and indirect expenses, all these three must belong to production department. So we are not using these three on a product, but still necessary to complete the production process. Okay, so prime cost plus production department is equal to product cost. Product cost means the total cost of making our product or producing our product. With that, if we are going to add non-manufacturing or non-production overheads, what are non-production overheads? Non-production overheads. These are overheads. So obviously these are all indirect cost. Yes. But these are all indirect cost except the production department. So cost of all the departments except production department. Okay. This is not so what good. else? What can be the cost of other departments? For example, our selling department costs. So in selling department, whatever cost will going to arise, all costs will be considered as indirect cost. There will be no direct cost in the selling department. Then all the cost of our distribution department, finance department and all the other department except the production department. So product cost plus non-production overheads, we will get the total cost. Total cost basically mean the cost of making our product and selling our product. So making and selling our product, the total cost included in that will be considered as total cost. And total cost with that, if we are going to add our profit margin or profit markup, then we will going to get the price. And this is the price that over which we will going to sell our product to the customer. Clear with the formula of product cost? Yes, sir. Any question? No, sir. Okay.